throughout history. Social engineers have refined techniques designed to control large populations. In World War II, this country could use its uh, news media to propagandize and make, out, make the whole American public uh, love the love the Germans and the Japanese, rather love the Russians and the Chinese and hate the Germans and the Japanese. And then after the war, they changed it and made the American public love the uh, the Germans and love the Japanese, hate the Russians and hate the Chinese, which shows that they can make the American public love whom they will and hate whom they will. And that same process can be used to re-educate the American public. The press has been completely corporatized. Uh, fallen into the hands of roughly a half dozen corporations, Viacom, General Electric, Disney, Rupert Murdoch, News Corp, Clear Channel, and that has uh, created very narrow parameters by which any kind of debate can take place. It's sort of like what uh, Dorothy Parker used to say about Katherine Hepburn's emotional range as an actress that runs from A to B. Um, you step outside of those narrow parameters, i.e. cheerleading for the Democrats or the Republicans, uh, and you actually begin to talk about structures of power, corporate power, how they work, um, then you become a pariah. And we see six corporations controlling 90% of almost everything Roughly, we see yeah. in media. And now they're slowly coming into the internet market with right. AOL Time Warner That's buying right. up Huffington Post. Yeah, of course. Yeah. They want to, the systems of control, want to control the systems of information. I mean, that's natural. Knowledge is power, and the more they control it, the more they dupe us. Uh, well, and but they don't disseminate knowledge. They disseminate propaganda. Um, knowledge is the last thing they want us to have. America forms its opinions by information that's provided to them. And common sense will tell you that if the information that you get from your mainstream media is misinformation or disinformation or even a lie, then common sense will tell you that the opinion is an extension of the lie. Now, unfortunately, America and indeed the rest of the world is getting information that's being massaged, it's being spun, it's being prepared for them for consumption. And when we watch the mainstream media, it's really easy to recognize this after a while. It's the presidential reality show. But when it became an Oprah production, it became slick. You don't have a president, you have an actor. They say that politics is show business for ugly people. You got it. What am I going to tell the president when I tell him his teleprompter is broken? <laughs> what will he do then? Most people still today think that all entertainment uh, to do with movies, drama, is, is, is there for nothing more than their entertainment. It never ever was that case. And when you're being downloaded through fiction, your guard is down, the sensor part of your brain is not in, uh, in action. It isn't saying, yes, I agree with this, I disagree with that, as you would in a debate or a lecture. You're actually in an alpha state, being completely downloaded with new ideas. Many of the strategies used to control populations were originally developed by Edward Bernays, who coined the phrase public relations. Bernays said that if you manufacture an authoritative figure who repeats the same messages over and over, that this will appeal to the masses' subconscious desires Yes, we can. Yes, we can. The unwashed masses will helplessly follow the leader and go along with any message they spout. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we, can. we shall overcome. Yes, we can. Yes, we, can. we will respond with that timeless creed that sums up the spirit of a people. Yes, we can. Thank you. Today, these exact techniques are being used with devastating effect against the general population. It was understood that you're going to have to control people by controlling opinion and attitudes, because we can't rely on force anymore. And uh, control of opinion and attitudes means, uh, uh, well, you know, there was actually a phrase for it. This, this was the time when what was called scientific management of work was becoming a big issue, Taylorite management, you know, Ford and all that stuff. Uh, but you, it was also understood you want to not only control very closely the lives of people in their work time, but also you have to control them in their off work time. And what you have to do is turn them into passive, obedient uh, consumers uh, who uh, don't pay, you know, don't try to 
get out of our hair, basically. Pay attention to the what were called the superficial things of life, like fashionable consumption. You get them trapped into consumerism, uh, isolated from one another, atomized, uh, control their beliefs. Uh, that's where notions like manufacture of consent come from right after the First World War. And out of this came huge industries. Uh, the, and advertising is a large part of it, but uh, and it of course affects the media enormously. I mean, if, uh, if any of you are, you know, if you watch television, for, for example, take say television. Uh, uh, when you turn on the television set, the corporation doesn't make any money, right? Like they, you don't pay them when you turn it on unless it's cable. Uh, but they do. So why do they do it? Well, they do it because of the advertising. So the uh, the uh, resources and the creativity and the effort and so on in the whole television industry goes into advertising. In fact, within the television industry, they, there are they, there are words called content and fill. Like a program has content and a program has fill. The content is the advertising. The fill is the car chase that's in there to keep you watching until the next ad comes along. And uh, all the effort, of course, goes into the advertising. And the the, con the fill has to, uh, to, you know, first of all, it's to keep your interest uh, enough so you watch the advertising, but the advertising is there for a purpose. I mean, it's to make you, it's to turn people into creatures whose only concern in life is to max out their five credit cards uh, and uh, not to pay attention to what's going on in the world and let the rich, powerful guys do what they want without interference. There's two ways you can go with TV. TV is an addiction. It's just like a, it is just like heroin or morphine or opium. They don't like to talk about this, but all of their statistics show that people are addicted to television and they show the same type of withdrawal symptoms when they stop watching television as they do with other addictive drugs. This has all been scientifically documented. It's not something that I'm making up. And there are many books, The Plug-In Drug by Denise Wynn, uh, or um, Four Arguments for the Elimination of Television, Amusing Ourselves to Death, um, a whole bunch. I've read a lot of books on television written by very brilliant uh, analysts of that medium. And so basically it is an addiction. If you're watching it every day, then first of all, the, the first thing you have to do is look at what you're watching. Uh, that's the most important thing first, as just a first step. You, most people will find that what they watch is rubbish. There are certain people that do watch like uh, the news, which I think is rubbish as well because it, it's just empty. I mean, there's a book called Watching TV News um, by Neil Postman. Very clearly articulates the fact this guy is a PhD in communications theory at Columbia University that you don't learn anything on the news. You, in fact, are, are, are actually dumbed down. People during the Gulf War crisis, there were statistical studies done. The people watching CNN knew less about the war than people that were reading uh, uh, articles about the war. So, and you can read an article in five minutes, it take you a half an hour to watch a news program. About 90% of it is just what they call fluff. And then the 10% is, and the other thing, I don't think we should look, uh, and I'm very opposed to showing pictures of dead, we should not uh, denigrate our brothers and sisters that have died by exposing their nakedness to the whole world to look at. Those photojournalists, they're like dogs over carcasses. They have no human compassion for the, the people and the victims that they're taking pictures of. And I really would urge all of you to write magazines and ask them to stop putting these pictures in our magazines because, one, we become desensitized to the suffering that our brothers and sisters are um, experiencing all over the world. But, two, they literally don't benefit you. What you end up doing is looking at it, feeling disgusted, and turning the next page. And that is, is something it's despicable in itself. The fact that you can see that and then go have dinner is a sign that the heart's dead. I mean, if we really had living hearts and you see one of those pictures, uh, you'll vomit or, or just weep uh, bitter tears and probably wouldn't eat. Hassan al-Basri, somebody mentioned death to him and he didn't eat for three days. So really uh, think about that. Um, but, you know, the television is a, a serious disease. What, what I would uh, recommend this Ramadan is everybody who has a television, just unplug it during that month. Literally put it into a closet and don't watch it for an entire month. And just look at the change that takes place in your life inside the house. It, was it positive 
or was it negative? That's what I would ask all of you to do. And what you need to do is really incur, uh, uh, encourage your children and instill in them a love of reading from an early age. Because if, they, if you use the television as a babysitter as them as children, they will become addicted to it at an early age. And television is hard to compete with. It really is. It's a type of neural stimulation um, that, that uh, books uh, tend to uh, have a difficult time competing with. And children that grow up watching television uh, end up not reading. And this has all also been documented. So I would encourage you to read the literature. There's a book called Kicking the TV Habit, which is a very good book for parents. And it gives alternatives to um, doing these things. And one thing with the children is, you know, I would just encourage like family people instead of getting together to watch a television program is do something human where you literally interact with each other and just enrich our lives a little bit it's not just children that don't realize they're being manipulated it's actually everybody it's the adult population as well because there's a lot of people that think that they can watch these things and they don't think that they're being affected by it they actually believe somehow that they're immune to it they, well, it's affecting all these other people, but I'm not affected by it, right? As he puts on his Ray-Ban glasses and, and ties his Nike shoes and, and gets into his Lexus car. I mean, all of those things, why does he have them? He, he didn't really choose them. They, they were actually implanted in his mind because he's buying on impulse. Most people, in fact, they call it impulse buying. They don't actually buy because they want something or, or they need something. They actually have been programmed to buy these things. Now, the average person in this country is seeing, according to studies that have been done on this, 3,000 commercials a day. This doesn't include television. This is talking billboards. A lot of this doesn't include like t-shirts, all these people going around with t-shirts. And I, I saw somebody today, he had this Calvin Klein thing. I said, is he paying you? Do you have a contract? He said, no. I said, well, you're getting robbed because you're giving him free advertising and you're not getting any money out of it. That's un-American. <laughs> if you look in a study they did in a survey that the average worker like service worker in this country watches 30 hours of television a week. Children, they say 40 to 60 hours of television a week, a full-time job, watching nonsense. This is what they're doing. When you go to the managers of these people, they watch 20 hours a week. When you go to the, uh, the heads of, the, of the, 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 you know, the people over the managers, the overseers, then you get like 10 hours a week. When you get to the CEOs, they watch two to three hours of television a week. 50% of that material is material related to the work that they're doing. So the movers and shakers in this world are not sitting around watching television. They're utilizing their lives for evil. And they're spreading their facade all over the world, but they're busy at it. Because we have gone to sleep, they have taken over. And that's why we find ourselves in the horrific condition we find ourselves in. We're just going to be in one nightmare to another. That's all it is. They're just nightmares because we're asleep. And when we wake up, then we can enter into the light of day. And Islam is a deen about waking up. That's what it is. Religion is supposed to wake people up. Islam is not an opiate. There are other religions that fulfill that function. In fact, they got rid of religion and now they just spread opium, quite literally. The same people that used to control the state, that controlled religion to maintain the masses, to do what they want them to do. When they got rid of religion, when they found it was no longer useful, now they literally spread drugs. You can see this. Their own, the CIA in this country is directly involved and engaged in drug dealing, bringing in cocaine, putting England. it into the inner cities in this country. In Liverpool, in England, in Liverpool, this is not a joke, I'm not making this stuff up. You can go buy this in, in mainstream uh, bookstores and read this stuff of people within these organizations that admit this, they'll even admit this on 60 Minutes. I mean, this is not a joke, this is reality, people. There are people that want to keep you asleep. If they don't use the drugs of, of white powder, they'll use the drug of television, they'll use the drug of their mass media, they'll use all these drugs, but they're going to keep you asleep because they fear the day that you wake up. That's what they fear. And you should be very well aware of that. 
All these multinational economic, political, uh, economic powers that are, are literally subjugating, humiliating, stealing the minerals and resources of human beings all over the world in order for them to play golf on the weekends. And then you have those like the Pentagon and all these uh, powerful militaries that go around turning innocent people and humiliating people, bombing innocent civilians, gassing human beings. We had Kurdish human beings that were gassed. Be aware of that, people. Kurdish human beings living in villages, mothers with their babies gassed by these people. This is how they feel about human beings. This is reality. And if you don't like it, go back to sleep. But this is reality. You're all adults and you better start just being aware of what kind of world we're living in and what we have to do to make some changes. Because the changes aren't going to come around if we just keep sleeping along, dozing along, putting on the snooze button. Because the alarm clock keeps going off and we just sit around. I mean, this is, this is it. We have to become people of seriousness. If you read the stories of those who went before us, when they asked them, what was Ibn Omar like? They asked Nafi. The man said, don't ask me about it because you'll never do what he did. They said, well, what did he do? He said he did wudu for every prayer. And between the prayers, he was either occupied in, in important matters or re rec reciting the Quran. These were people of depth and seriousness. They weren't frivolous people. They went and they literally spread this deen to the ends of the earth. And this is not pie in the sky rhetoric. This is not pie in the sky rhetoric. Our deen is not a deen of rhetoric. It's a deen of action. It's a deen of doing things, of going out and changing the world. And the people in this room have the potential to do that. The people in this room, have, you have the potential to do that if you're willing to rise up to the level of the deen. But if you choose to remain in your sleep, in your somnambulant states, if we choose all to just carry along, mosey along, go to the mall, become consumers until we're consumed, right? Born to buy, the one with the most toys in the end wins, right? He still dies, right? You don't, the toys don't go with you. And we're not people of play. We're not people of play. Quran says that Allah didn't create the, this world as a play and a pastime. La'ibn wa lahwa. It's not for playing and pastime. You're men. You're not children. You're men. Don't waste your time watching sports on the, on the CNN or whatever you watch it on. Get up and do something with your lives. Become serious people of, of depth and understanding. I mean, really, do it. Just do it, right? Just get out and do it. Don't, don't just sit around and, and, until the next game's on. And, and they'll just keep giving it to you. They'll give it to you. They'll give you football, and then they'll give you baseball, and then they'll give you basketball, and then they'll give you football again, and then they'll give you baseball, and then they'll give you basketball. They'll keep churning out the songs for you, one after another. They'll bring the new pop stars. They'll bring the new actresses with the beautiful faces. They'll bring the new design, the latest fashion, the latest fad. They'll just keep doing it for you. They'll keep churning it out as long as you keep eating it up and buying it. The day that you turn it off is the day that you have overcome them. That that is the day that we, that we have had victory. Yeah, I wish the president would stop lying. Black babies would stop crying. And young brothers would stop dying. I wish the police would stop killing. Politicians stop stealing and acting like they're not dealing. When they know they got bricks in the street. At the country club fixing the eat. How could this be? The land of the free, home of the brave, indigenous holocaust, and the home of the slaves, corporate America, dancing offbeat to the rhythm. You really think this country never sponsored terrorism? Human rights violations, we continue the saga. El Salvador and the Contras and Nicaragua. And on top of that, you still want to take me to prison, just because I won't trade humanity for patriotism. It's like MK Ultra controlling your brain, suggestive thinking, cause and your perspective to change They want to rearrange the whole point of view of the ghetto The fourth branch of the government wants to settle A bandana full of glittering generality Fighting for freedom and fighting terror But what's reality? Read about the history of the place that we live in And stop letting corporate news tell lies to your children